Number 12? Remember? Oh, it's just, there you go. Guys, you had a different power. We're trying to get n, or whatever the variable is, whatever the unknown is by itself on one side. Right, so whatever step we take, we should leave n more isolated. And because there's just several different ways to approach it, I'll just ask you, what would you do? Yeah. Add a 10 on each side. That sounds good, because I can just take, I can just take negative 10 plus 10 and get zero, right? I'll show you why I'm kind of being weird about this in a minute. 12 plus 10 plus 22. <coughs> and what would you do to get it by itself? equals 22 over 4 equals 11 over 2 equals 5.5. 5. Yes? Um, I knew that if, like, could you divide the 4 first or no? That's a good question. Can you divide by 4 first? Can you divide by four first? That's the question. On the table. No. Right. <coughs> uh, answer is yes. You can. you can divide by four first. Now, it's a little trickier, okay, for reasons that people usually don't realize. Okay. Uh, so, can you? Yes. On average, if you asked uh, a, a person who knows how to solve for n, uh, would they divide by 4 first? Probably they wouldn't. Okay? So here's why. Uh, because it's much easier to just pick off that negative 10, because it's just kind of hanging out there by itself, if you want to think of it that way. It's last on the list of order of operations, so it's the first thing that we can take off. Okay? If we divide by 4 first, think about this fact. This is an equation, isn't it? We talked about this? Mm -hmm. Did we not? We did. We did. This is an equation. It needs to stay balanced, right? Yep. So if I say divide by 4, okay, then I'm going to divide this side by 4. I'm not going to try and show you that with these things. But I'm going to divide this side by 4. Right? I'm going to cut whatever is here down to 1 fourth of what it was. So what do I need to do on the other side? Everything, right? If there's one of these guys, I need to cut it into pieces and, and take one fourth of that. And if there are little tokens over here and here, I need to not only divide this thing by four, but divide these things by four. Right? Everything needs to get divided by four. So let me see my obvious when they're looking at the scale. I hope it seems obvious. When we come over here and I get the idea to divide by four because I see a four there. I'm going to divide this side by 4, and I'm going to divide this entire side by 4. Okay? Do you see the mistake someone might make in this situation? Mm -hmm. What mistake might they make? Not, not, divide, ten. not divide 10 by Just divide by 4 and get n minus 10 equals 3. Right? That's a common mistake. But if we do like we ought to do, this will still work out just fine. We get n, right? 4n divided by 4 is n. Negative 10 divided by 4 is negative 5 halves. Okay, this would be 6 halves. We'll just leave it as 6 halves because we know what we're about to do. I mean, it's common enough that we can do that. Right? So, what do we do to get n by itself? Add 5 halves. Add 5 halves. n equals 6 halves plus 5 halves. We have a common denominator. So you have okay, so we'll like an n less of each. So you can do that divide by four first, but you gotta realize you're dividing everything by four. So it just means you have to work with fractions and you get there anyway. But if you do not do that first, if you do add 10 first, then the fractions part just comes in the form of like simplifying after you divide. You divide by four on both sides and simplify. Yeah. 
back three. Same idea as this one, like getting rid of that plus or minus thing. That's probably the easiest thing to do first. So subtract three on both sides, and seven B equals negative four. And we get rid of that eight sevenths. Multiply it times seven eighths. And we can get 63, no, we can get 56 over 56. Uh, which is 1, or cross cancellation, that equals 1, it's all the same. So multiplying with 7 eighths here, B equals, we just kind of cancels here, uh, negative, we have 1 there, 2 here. So we get negative 7 over 2. Okay, that's what B must be worth for that to work out. Ready for the, for the review? Ready to show off what we know? Okay, and let's pass in the homework slash pink slips. Okay, so we start off nice and mellow here. We get x by itself. Nine to both sides. You might make the mistake of maybe working too quickly and subtracting nine from both sides. Be careful of that kind of thing. Sure that you are canceling out stuff. So if I were to do this, mistakenly subtract 9. Okay, we get x equals uh, 4. Well, I could get 4 on this side, I could get x on this side, except the problem is what's negative 9 minus 9? Negative, negative 18. So now, now it's not wrong anymore, it's still true. It's just not done. So I accidentally subtracted 9, we should have added 9 to both sides. So still, if we add 18 to both sides, we will get 22. All right, 5k equals 40. We, have, we want to know some number k. We know that if we multiply k by 5, we'll get 40. So that's too much. We obviously want one fifth of this thing. It's five times as big as we want it to be. multiplied by 3 eighths. Why is multiply by 3 eighths not the thing you want to do? Multiply by the reciprocal. If you don't multiply by the reciprocal, what happens here? What do you get when you multiply 3 eighths by 3 eighths? 9 over 64. 9 over 64. Okay, so I could write 9 over 64 and do it that way. And it would be correct, but it wouldn't be much closer to being solved, right? Uh, I guess because 3 eighths times 3 eighths equals 9 over 64, what, what does Rick want 3 eighths times 3 eighths to be? What? Cancel. Yeah, what does it mean, cancel? One. one. He wants it to be 1, right? He wants it to be 1. And it's not. It's 9 over 64. To get it to be one, we've all said it several times, well not all, but it's been said several times, multiply by the reciprocal of three eighths, right? Subtract six, but then instead of this, he even does it correct on this side, multiply the three eighths correctly on this side. On the eye. Uh, instead, we'll multiply by eight thirds. Eight and eight, three and three. Eight thirds. Three can cancel fifteen. Five times h, so uh, m equals forty. Watch out! If you're this person you're multiplying by the fraction, right? then don't do that. You can divide by three eighths, right? Because that's the same as multiplying by eight thirds. But don't multiply by three eighths or whatever the fraction may be. All right. 
to ask any questions if you have them. If not, tally it up, pass it back. Take a look at uh, your work. If it's right, great. If it's wrong, learn from it. And then pass them all in. Um, so now, we're going to keep solving equations. Uh, they're just going to get trickier. All right? Great. Let's start with this guy. Last class was fantastic. We took a little break, stretched legs, chatted, got back to work. So hopefully we all we all this fast. All right. So let me show you here. You may know exactly what to do. Maybe every single one of you does, but I have a feeling at least one of you might try something like what I'm about to use. Uh, let's. I, I see 7p plus 13. I'm on the left side of the equation. I'm used to getting p equals stuff, right? p on the left equals stuff on the right. And so I just get so uh, honed in on that. And I subtract 13. Subtract 13, I'll do negative 5 minus 13. Get 7, uh, 7p equals 9p uh, minus 18. OK? And I'm almost done. I'm just going to divide by 7. P equals 9P minus 18, 7. I have P on the side, right? That's good. So I did it, right? Why not? How would you describe it to someone that doesn't really still? And you're, you still have P on the other side, so you still have 9P unaccounted for somewhere in there. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's a good explanation. Did I tell you I have a quiz next time? We have a quiz next time. Okay. Next time. Not this time, not right now. Get, oh, we fail. We got this 9P that we don't know about, okay? So we've got to kind of figure it out to the end. Is there another? There's still the other P. The other P. Like the 9P. You got to like collect lights and You what? Okay, you're trying to solve my problem, but I don't really see what my problem is yet. Would it be easier if you divided like 9p minus 8p by the 7 so you didn't have a fraction on the other side? I did that. I divided by 7. No, but you still got your 7 there. You still have a like fraction. Oh, like the decimals? Yeah, with decimals, I think if you didn't put them in a fraction form again, but like decimals, that might be easier for people. Well, I still I don't understand what my problem is. I don't understand why I can't have T on the other side too. Why not? Because you're trying to solve the T, and so you have to have it. Done. Solve. It's not simple. So 
We're going to solve the problem in just a minute. But OK, one more from this. P needs to be equal to a constant. So then you have just one P and equal to a constant number, and it's not a variable anymore over mm -hmm. here. You still have to solve for a variable. OK. Uh, yes. And, and really, it's kind of a silly thing to say here, because like, if, if I could figure out what this was, like if I could plug something in for P, then I could like, figure out what this number was, right? Agreed? And then I can figure out what P is? What is it, though, that I need to know on this side in order to figure out what P is? I have to know what P is to figure out what P is. OK? I had somebody in the last class say, it's kind of like saying a, a bus is a bus. It doesn't really tell me what a bus is, right? Oh. It's true. A bus is a bus. But what is what's a bus? bus? But what's a bus? <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's very circular, right? So we call circular reasoning. So we need to fix this problem. To fix this problem, we need to get all of the p's on one side, or x's or n's or whatever, and only constants on the other side. That's what we're trying to get, right? So that's what we're trying to get. So how do we do that? Let's start over. And the only reason I dwell on that for a few minutes is because people do that. It happens. And maybe someone in this room right now is thinking that that was kind of a silly thing to do when they're on their own solving for p. They just kind of forget, and they give me an answer like that. Okay? Maybe you're just like working too quickly or whatever, and then that's the answer that I get. But we don't want that. We don't want p equals something with p in it. It's like saying bus is a bus. So how do we do that? How do we fix that problem? get P's on one side and, and numbers on the other side. Yeah. Subtract five from, or add five to each side. OK, add five. And then subtract seven. Oh, just do it all at once. OK, got to be very careful here. Let's make sure everything works out. 7P minus 7P is 0. 13 plus 5 is 18. Uh, equals 9P minus 7P is 2P. And negative 5 plus 5 is 0. That's what I was forgetting. Then divide by 2. P is nine. Well, that makes more sense. Now I know what P is. Now I know what a bus is. It's a big yellow thing. And kids ride it at school. And <coughs> uh, now I've defined what P is. So let me uh, just make one up. Okay, I'm going to do this, uh, I think you all probably did fine here. Um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a mistake and I want you to spot it. Okay? Uh, Actually, what I was pretending I was trying to do was, was get the x's on one side and the other stuff on the other side. But what you're saying actually happened was like everything got on one side. Yeah, you're like putting everything on one side. Yeah. And then you ended up with them on either side. Exactly. What I actually did, in, in truth, in reality, was everything got put on one side. Can I throw this at you? Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. I. I I thought I was doing this, but I wasn't doing that. I actually wound up doing this. Let's look at what I actually did. 2x minus 2x is what? Uh, zero. And 5 minus 5 is zero. zero. This side, I just left nothing. And on this side, I have the 2x and the negative 24. I see this happen all the time, so it's not like I'm just making it up for no reason. You try to do everything all at once, and that's a great idea and all, but you're not thinking about what's going where, you wind up with this is what is actually the truth. Now, this is still true. This is not. Right? This is still true. I just did everything that I said I was going to do. I subtracted 2x. I subtracted 5. Okay, well, now I just have 0 equals 2x plus 24. So I could add 24 to both sides. 24 equals 2x, x. Uh, 
for that. As you, I think as you work faster, and maybe even when this is just part of a problem you're trying to solve, that's when mistakes like that happen. <coughs> you could do it all at once, except for instead of minus 2x and minus 5, you should do minus 2x and minus 2x, and what, uh, what would you do? Plus 19. Plus 19 and plus 19. That's what we should do to kind of put things where they should go. Isolate x. Something funny is kind of occurring. Yeah, Mitch? You, if you try to get the x's on one side, you just completely delete all of the x's. You get yeah, so all the x's go away, what do we get? Four. Nine equals negative four. Nine equals negative four, 13 equals zero. Are any of these things true? No. Does nine equal negative four? No, it does not equal negative four. What does it equal? Nine. Nine. Nine equals and what does negative 4 equal? Negative 4. But well, what do I say about this problem? Too bad, so sad. I mean, that's not really a math answer. Well, still, it just doesn't seem like I can do that, right? Could you divide it by 2? OK, let's divide it by 2. Now keep in mind, like from the beginning, from Wes's question, if we divide both sides by two, we get a both both sides by two. You know what I mean? We gotta divide nine by two and negative four by two as well. But we can do that. X plus nine halves equals x minus two. Okay, what we do now to figure out what x is? Subtract x, right? On both sides, and we get the same problem. But ultimately, x still dies. Yes? Could you do like times one of them by negative one in front of them in parentheses and the other come? Wait, well, you're just getting at the cardinal rule of algebra. It's a good idea because if, if, if I could like add two x to both sides to cancel out a negative two, right, that'd be great. But that wasn't even close to being. If I multiply this side by a negative one, and I multiply this side by negative one, right? Whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other. No matter what amount of trickery we try to do, it comes down to there are equal parts x on both sides. Then we're, we're ultimately going to come up with the same thing. Zero equals some number that zero is not equal to. Or two numbers equal to each other that are not equal to each other. So nine equals negative four or whatever. Yeah. So x equals zero. Well, even if x equals 0, put 0 in there, put 0 in there. What happens when I put 0 in for x? Well, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. And 9 equals negative 4, which means it's not possible. It's not possible. That's what we want to get at. Like, there's no way to figure an x that will make this equation true. Let's go back to, just to make it a little bit easier, x plus 9 halves equals x minus 2. Now we don't have two x, we just have x. Now, if this x is three, what's this x? You might, like, is three plus nine halves the same as taking two away from three? Is there any number that you can do that with? No, I can't put five there, I can't put negative three there, I can't put 12 there, I can't put 18 there. No, no number will be the same when I add nine halves to it and when I subtract two from it. It can possibly be the same thing going in two different directions, I'm doing two different things to the same number, and I'm trying to wind up with the same thing. So this is impossible. impossible. It's good to know when things are impossible. That's something that's nice about math. We absolutely know that you can't do this. All right. When I figured out that x was 12 in this equation, what do we call 12? It's a word that starts with s. Next letter is L. Solution. It's the solution. The solution is the value for x, or whatever the, the letter is, the value for x that when I go back and plug it in, the equation is true. It's true. 
But there's no way to make this equation true, right? We'll get 9 equals negative 4, or 0 equals 13, or some other kind of nonsense. 9 halves equals negative 2. Nothing can make this equation true. Nothing can reconcile this equation. Okay? So it's impossible. So how many solutions have we found? None. There are no solutions. No solution exists. No value of x will work. On the other hand, we're going to change this thing. Now, how do I know that, that it's impossible? Like, no matter what I plug in for x, what can never happen? Can never get, can never get the equation to be true. Yeah. Equal, true. Okay. Can't be true. How about 2x plus 9 equals 2x plus 9? Yeah. X is 0. Anybody else think of another solution? One. X is 1, yeah. but X is 2. Yeah. Then X is negative 5. What about solutions. negative 5? What about negative 5? Any solution. Yeah. All any solutions are possible. Solution. So, infinite solutions. X can be any real number. Simple means all real number. So in one case, we have no solutions. In a slightly different case, we have all numbers work. Now when you're working through this and you're trying to solve it, how are you going to know the difference? How are you going to know that you have no solutions or infinite solutions? No solutions or infinite solutions. Infinite solutions, like everything is the exact same on both sides of the equation. True. And Remember when we tried to subtract 2x on both sides, or x on both sides? We got nonsense afterwards, right? What will we get if we subtract 2x on both sides in this case? 9 equals 9. Not nonsense, right? One. Absolute truth. 9 is equal to 9. Every day, all the time, it's always equal to 9. No matter what we do with x, anything for x will work. This equation will always be true. 9 will always be equal to 9. So when we get something that's true, we'll have infinite solutions, because no matter what we do to x, we can't stop this from being true. And in this case, we'll get 9 equals negative 4, 0 equals 13, something that's false. No matter what we do with x here, we can't make it be true. In this case, we can't stop it from being true. Does that make sense? Okay. No solutions and infinite solutions. Two. We just got past, let's go back to this guy, a situation where we've got variables on both sides and we just collect like terms and everything's great. But now, now something's in our way. How do we, how do we rectify the situation? How do we make this equation look kind of like the previous equation? You take the numbers outside of the that parentheses and distribute it you distribute it to that second number as well. Yeah. 3x plus 6 equals 5x Now that I've done one thing, distributed, now it looks a lot like that page before where we had x's on both sides and, and uh, no big deal. So now we, remember we gotta collect all of the x's on one side. Okay. And if I'm gonna do minus 3x and minus 3x, I'm gonna get 2x on this side. So I want to have the numbers on this side, so I'll subtract 20, subtract 20, and get 14, and negative 7. What's that? Somebody said something about the less. <laughs> I think it's just my like columns, yeah. you one. Uh, let's go with okay. 
it's just like before, we're going to distribute in both cases 7x minus 28 equals 4x plus 12. I'll subtract 4x. I always like to subtract or add x's or whatever in such a way that I get, whenever I'm done, the x's, whether they're on the left or right, are positive. So that's it. I got 3x on this side, so I would like to, on the other side of the equation, have numbers. So I'll add 28. We get uh, 40, yes. Let me divide by 3. x is equal to 40 over 3. I really recommend you not just punch that in your calculator, 40 divided by 3, and then giving me this repeating decimal nightmare. Thank you. Alright, so we've got variables on both sides, we've distributed. How do you guys feel about that? Okay, I'm going to give you uh, three equations that I want you to solve, see how we're doing. One of them is going to be slightly tricky, so watch out. No, it's just for your notes. This one? Um, you would distribute, so it would be 4x minus 12 equals 20x plus 40. Definitely. Okay. And now it's just like this guy, right? Approach it very much the same way. What'd you guys do? Make sure that if you're going to do that all at once, just make sure it all works out. So 4x minus 4x is 0. Negative 12 minus 40 is negative 52. Uh, 20x minus 4x is 16x. 40 minus 40 is 0. And then divide. So negative, I think it's 13 over. Okay, so this is a slightly tricky one. So what's x times x when we distribute? Negative x times 3. x, x squared minus 5x plus 16. You can distribute that x. You might think, what do I do about x squared? I can solve when I have x, because uh, mostly I know, and this is an important, helpful thing to remember, mostly I know that I'm going to get something times x by itself on one side and then divide by whatever that thing is. It's multiplied by x, right? Uh, it happened here, it happened here, it's happened pretty much every time we've solved an equation. What do I do about x squared? Like I'm starting to feel a little nervous. I don't know how to handle x squared. But luckily, what happens? It cancels out. You subtract x squared on both sides and it just goes away and we don't have to deal with it. We will solve equations with x squared in them, and they will not be that simple. We're not just going to cancel out the x squareds, but uh, 
for now, this is still a linear equation, okay, because we have just x to the first power here. We add 5x, we add 5x, 8x equals 16, x equals 2. Questions on any of those three? No? We're going to take a break for uh, a little bit, but wait. Remember, just keep this in mind, how most of these problems, all the ones we've done so far, come down to something times x and divide by that thing. Something times y, divide by that thing. Something times y, divide by that thing. Right? Uh, let's see. Divide by that thing, divide by that thing. So just keep that in mind. Something times x, if we divide by that thing, it's multiplied by x or y or whatever, it cancels it out. Okay? And now we will take a short break. A three minute break. We're going to keep isolating variables, but there may be other variables in the equation with those variables. Okay? So a simple example would be x plus a equals 3. I'm going to solve for x. So what does x equal to? 3a. Negative 3a. 3a minus a. What's that? 3 minus a. 3 minus a. If this were a 7 or a 12 or any other number, how would you cancel that out? You would subtract it, right? Subtract it. x equals 3 minus a. Now whatever a is, once I find out what a is, walk down the street and somebody says, oh, hey, I figured out what A was. I tell you it's 5. You're like, oh, great, I was waiting for that. Now I can figure out what X is. Uh, 3 minus 5 would be negative 2, or whatever A turns out to be. We just subtract it from 3, and now we know what X is. But for now, we don't know what A is. We're ready for whenever A comes along. Okay. So we'll just kind of try and uh, steadily step these up, OK, so they get a little more challenging and a little more challenging until we're doing things in the past possible. Or, or maybe not. Maybe it's just normal, a normal feeling from over here. Let's like our This is a formula that we use a lot. Do you know what the D, R, and T stand for? Distance equals rate times time. So let's say we wanted to figure out what t is. We're going to get t by itself. But right now, this is solved for d. We would like to solve it for t. Treat r and t, d, like would any other numbers go for it. You divide rate times time by rate, and then divide distance by rate, and now you have time equal to distance divided by rate. That's right. So, if this were 3t, you divide by 3. 5t, you divide by 5. 7t, you divide by 7. You get the idea. So it went through those other problems and, and reminded you when you have something times t times x times whatever we're trying to solve for, just divide by that guy that's being multiplied here. So r divided by r is 1, and we're left with t. Two times, so multiply by two. Two a divided by height equals base. I'm asking for the answer. I'm asking for half of the answer. So then you divide by two. Multiply by two. Everybody agree that works? Yeah. So uh, two a equals b times h. B times h. Divide by h. Divide by h. So we're not being fooled by H being on the right side of B, right? Less than that. We feel it's still multiplication. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, this one first. Equals nine fifths C plus thirty-two. 
too. Did you know this formula? Does convert it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Yeah, I assume it'd be to, to plug in something for C and then find out that, right? Well, solve, solve for F. And the way it's set up, it's easiest to go from C to F. Because all you have to do is plug something in for C, multiply by 9, there's F32, and you're done. You know what F is. If we're going to figure out, if we're going to plug in something for F, well, then we're going to have to solve for C, right? Now, if we solve for C while well, F is still F and not some number that we plugged in, then we'll have a new formula that converts from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So let's do that. Let's solve for C. Let's see by itself. Bless you. Thanks. Divided by. Divide what? F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C. And the time multiplied by the reciprocal, so 5 times. Okay. 5 times F minus 32. Now, remember, I can't, like, I can't say <laughs> 5 nine times F, right? It's 5 nine times both sides of the equation. On this side, that's straightforward. On this side, we just need to remember that that means put parentheses around the entire left side and multiply the entire left side by 5 ninths. Which we can leave like this. And in fact, if you, if you were to Google uh, Celsius, no, Fahrenheit to Celsius formula, it would probably look like C equals 5 ninths F minus 32. Because that's, that's, that's pretty straightforward. You're going to put in some F is probably a whole number, probably. Subtract 32 and then multiply by 5 ninths. Leave the like, fraction part for the last. Or we can distribute the 5 ninths. You get 5 ninths F minus. Uh, 160 over 9. It's all the same. A equals 1 half B1 plus B2 times H. Area. A what? Area of area. Uh, sure. Maybe that more trapezoid. 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 Now, a parallelogram is a trapezoid, so it will work for a parallelogram, but even broader than that, it will work for a trapezoid. Just these guys. Or whatever. It just needs two parallels, a set of parallel sides. That's all it needs. Okay, let's start off easy. Let's solve this guy for H. other ways too, right? We could uh, just really quickly. I could just divide both sides by 1 half times B1 plus B2 all at once. And H could equal A over 1 half times B1 plus B2. Uh, I like this because it doesn't have a fraction. <coughs> Um, 
Um, and let's solve this. But this time we'll solve it for B2. Okay, so you got to 2a over h, right? So let's get there. Let's catch up. 2 over 1. Multiply by 2 over 1. So we get 2a equals, and the, the 2's cancel ones. We get b1 plus b2 times h is the same as the previous one, right? And uh, so we divide by h. 2a over h equals b1 plus now we mentioned this was 5 plus b2, or 7 plus b2, or 12 plus b2. What would you do with this thing that is not b2? Minus b1. Yeah, minus b1. So 2a over h minus b1. I'm trying to emphasize that this is its own little number over here. It's not part of the fraction. We haven't found common denominators, so we don't really need to worry about making it be part of this fraction. It can just be 2a over h minus b1, and that's it. And that works, and, and if I knew all the other stuff, then I could figure out what b2 was. Very good, very good. Okay. First, let's solve this one. Okay, try to get x by itself. there, I want to get y by itself. Divide by y. Divide by y. Divide by y. Did I say y by itself? Did I get x by itself? Divide by just a y. So what do we get on this side? Negative x equals 4 minus y over y. So then the negative, no, positive y cancel the negative y. Okay, let's look at that. Answer's no. Oh. Oh, but oh. <laughs> let's just kind of break it out here. If we want to do that, if we want to simplify this, we just have to recognize it as a fraction. 4 minus y over y is a fraction. And remember, this is something we had in our test, right? Can you simplify this fraction? Does y cancel y? If y cancels y, then we have to be able to write it like this. Remember this? Yes? We have to be able to write y over y times some fraction. Which we, let's, let's go over the denominator. y times what gives me y? What? Y times, let's go over here to, the, to this guy right here. What, y times something gives me negative y. Y times something gives me 4. 4 over y, which isn't simpler, right? And that would be the whole goal. It would have to be 4 over y. That's no good. So no, we can't simplify it. Um, we could write it differently, but differently wouldn't look much better. So no, it would be the 4 minus y. Now what do we do about, it's not x, right? We have to solve for x. Yeah? Divide this side by negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1. Uh, we'll divide this by negative 1. How do we, maybe multiply this by 1 over negative 1, or multiply by negative like whatever. Anything to change the sign of this guy. Multiply by negative 1, divide by negative 1. 
get 4 minus y over negative y? Or y minus 4 over positive y? Well, if it was over, no. like if it was a neg negative, why would they cancel then? Well, um, we have to be able to do the same thing. If negative y's are going to cancel each other, I still have to be able to write it as negative y over negative y times this other fraction, right? And negative y times one would give me negative y. And negative y times also positive 1 will give me negative y down here. It's negative y. Negative y. But negative y times what gives me 4? Yeah. Well, negative 4y. Negative 4 over y would do it. But I mean, it's not simple. So now let's take the same equation and not solve it for x, but solve it for y. Okay, um, let's see. How about divide by x? Dividing by x, maybe you think you know? Finally, you're already saying no, why not? Um, because the y minus y would be zero. So even if you thought that it canceled out that x, you get y minus y, that'd be zero, and that would, uh, yeah, wouldn't be good. You get kind of one of these uh, no solution, any solutions thing or something. Um, but what, what about this though? Maybe that is what happens. Like maybe I do divide by x, and that just happens. Is y minus x y over x the same thing as y minus y? Does this x cancel this x? The same reason we just talked about, we talked about two times in this previous problem, right, in the page before this. Does that x cancel that x? If you think it does, maybe it does. Think about this. If that x cancels that x, then we have to be able to write it as x over x times something. So that that times whatever this is gives me y minus x, y over x. You can't. You could can do x times 1 is x. You could even do minus y over here, x times minus y is minus xy, but x times something is just y. Uh, that thing would have to be y over x, and our life would be like, not simpler, right? It would be just as complicated as it was to start with. So dividing by x does not cancel that x, though it's a, it's a nice thought. OK. Could you? Uh, Okay, subtract 4, subtract 4, subtract y, subtract y, negative xy minus 4 equals negative y, and then what? And then could you divide the y? Divide, divide by y? Yeah. What are we trying to solve for? Y. We're trying to get y by itself, right? Yeah. If you divide by y, you are, well, first of all, you have to divide this whole thing by y be a little closer to having x by itself. But then we have negative 4 over y. I think that we, maybe we should try something else. It's good to try things and then say, I don't know, that's, that's looking harder and harder and it works. Right? What if you tried to divide by y to eliminate one of the y's? Divide by y. Like this? Yeah. So we can do what we did with x, but try to just get rid of one of the y. And then you have a y on that side. Mm -hmm. good. So it's true that I, I would get uh, 1 minus x here equals 4 over y. Yeah, but then you got y on one side. OK. So what do we do? It's in the denominator now. What do we do about that? Reciprocal. Yeah. What do you mean? Multiply by the reciprocal? You notice we yeah, just yeah. divided by y. If we multiply by the reciprocal, we're really multiplying by y. Uh, you know, we're just doing the opposite of what we just did. Can you just multiply by like four? Multiply by four? 
Uh, multiply by four, that would give me 16 over one. Over one. That so maybe we'll multiply by one fourth. The thing you need to remember there is I will cancel those fours, and I can divide this by four. But this side is still one over y, not y. One over y. One over y equals one minus x over four. What do we do about that? Sort of. Can't you divide the first one by negative x and make it move to the other side? The same reason that we can't divide by positive x. If we divide by negative x, then we need to cancel, so we'd have to be able to do negative x over negative x, and the same idea would have to work, and it doesn't. Here, go. Let's go back here to. Um, Is there no solution? No. There's not no solution. I mean, we're not going to get y as like 7 or something, but. Uh, actually, uh, here. What if I did multiply by y, but let's think of it differently this time. Okay, and I, I'll show you how we don't have to divide by y and multiply by y to do all this. But if we multiply by y over 1, cancel out the y on this side, right? And if I multiply by y over here, I'm going to need to distribute it, right? But don't distribute it. Let's see what happens when we don't distribute it. y times 1 minus x equals equals 4, can I get y by itself? Yeah. By dividing by 1, one minus x. There we go. So y equals 4 over 1 minus x. Now, this whole divide by y and multiply by y thing, you don't really want to do that. Okay. So let's just start at the first y minus xy equals 4. I'm just going to go straight from this to this. It's got to be true, right? Because we did it. But let's, let's look at what that might, how we might understand that. Well, how would I, I mean, are these things the same? Is this the same as this? How can you prove to me that this is the same as this? Mitch? So y times 1 would be y. Yeah. Then y times negative x would be negative xy. So we distribute the y. And it's the same as this. Yes. So from here to there, I can distribute the y, and they're the same. So going from this thing to this thing, what would we, you call this distribution, what would you call this, going from this to this? Simplify. Simplify. Huh? Simplify is kind of a general, a general term. You know, I need to do. <coughs> well, to get from this to this, we would distribute. To get from this to this, we would the opposite of distribute, right? So undistribute, that's a common thing that we we start off calling it. Hold on, just a couple more seconds. Hold on means stop moving around and making noise. Uh, you can call it undistributing. What it's really called is, what we just did was factor out the y. Okay, now we're going to call it factoring out. That's going to be the official term. But you could call factor out undistribute a y. Okay, that's what it is. We're doing the reverse of distribution. Just the reverse of distribution is called factoring out. Because distribution is just multiplying, right? That's how we multiply. The opposite of multiplying is factor. Right? 3 times 5, that's multiplying. Turn 15 into 3 times 5, that's factoring. Have a good day. Don't